Thank you for watching Blacksit. Please subscribe to our channel Blacksit. Smash that like button and share if you want. Black is a genetically dominant trait. And the darker you are, the more genetic power you have to produce this pigment. So the next thing we were taught, if you're black with a whole lot, get back. A little bit less if you're brown, stick around. If you're yellow, you're mellow. And if you're white, no pigment, you're all right. Now see, black people and people of color all over the world, I can go to London, England and say this, and everybody knows if you're black, your background, stick around, yellow, mellow, white, right? Because under white domination and under white supremacy, they taught us this by their behavior towards us yes. and programmed us yes. to behave in that way in relationship to and to begin to worship the fact that the grandmothers were raped. Are you all with me? Now, this is not for anybody to feel bad, but all of this instruction is based on maintaining this system of racism, white supremacy. And we need to understand that if I had Oprah Winfrey's money, I would get all of the crystal black people. And every year there would be a parade of the blackest people parading their beauty. In the visual head of racism, white supremacy, because we have little children. I don't know what CNN and Anderson Cooper and the whole program's about race, but they have little white children at age three looking at a strip of faces of different colors. And when asked which child is bad, and a three-year-old white child points immediately to the darkest face. Which one is ugly? The child points immediately. Which one is the one you don't want to be friends with? Points immediately to black. And the great tragedy is that when they ask little black children, little beautiful black children, they're doing the exact same thing. Which one is ugly? Now the black child hesitates, but then points to the darkest color. Which one is dumb, which one is bad, which one is ugly? And one little black child said, the color is nasty. Now see, we can't blame the children. Where do the children learn? The children learn when they turn on TV. They learn in the home. They learn at any book that they look at. They learn the lesson of racism, white supremacy, just like they learn English if that's spoken, or French if that's spoken, or whatever other language. They learn it. These colors lined up and spoken of in this way are essential for white <coughs> genetic survival. Yeah. See, in other words, destroy the black. If you look at the people who are incarcerated, they're people at the darker end of the spectrum. Now this is critical. We can't have mental health unless we understand this. But do you think that anybody in psychiatry, the American Psychiatric Association, do you think they're teaching this? Absolutely no. If anything, they will say, it's no such thing as racism. See, the denial of racism is essential to the survival of racism. The denial of 
racism on the part of people who classify themselves as white and the denial of racism on the part of people who are non-white all over this planet. The nine-tenths global majority of non-white people are all trying to, you know, all, many, many, many are trying to bleach their skin. Trying to make themselves white. I have a sister who teaches in a school in Chicago and she says a little child, I'm not black. I'm mixed race. <laughs> See, where did the child learn it? The child is not at fault. Where did the child learn it? We're the only group of people when we have to fill out the census. It takes us about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Where now the white people just quickly white out. We have to labor. Oh, I think I have a German relative. I think I got a Spanish or I'm not really on black. You know, brother Henry Louis Gates. Oh yeah, tell me. I got an outing because he's busy talking about, I'm mostly European. But how does this affect the black male-female relationship? Demonstration. It affects the relationship in this way. This whole system of racism, the goal objective is white genetic survival on this planet. White genetic survival. Now a lot of people say, oh no, it's all about economics. No, they use these areas of activity to make certain that there's white genetic survival. They make the money and use the money and dispense the money for the purpose of the system. The same is the distribution of education for the maintenance of the system of their survival. All over Europe today, when they talk about Islam, in checkmating into immigration, they are really talking about the flood of non-white people coming into Europe from Africa and causing what? White genetic annihilation. They say they're going to do something about it. And how many people remember the case of the Norwegian man who killed nearly 70 people? And these were children of African and Asian ancestry who were in Norway. And he killed them because they were causing potentially white genetic annihilation. Now, they gave him a pass and said he had psychological problems. <laughs> but he planned it well. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. And he carried it out. I say he wasn't mentally ill. He was engaging in white genetic survival by whatever necessary means. See, I say that standing your ground. Standing your ground, that means that, see, don't any black person attempt standing your ground. Now, black people can engage in standing their ground when they are killing other black people. Because that is assisting white genetic survival by the destruction of black men. So that's, you can get
get a pass with that. But don't start thinking you're afraid of a police officer and you're going to stay in your ground. Do you see, or that Trayvon could have stood his ground because he was afraid. No, those are the laws that are being put in place. It's just like when President Barack Obama became president. They had what they call the Obama effect. Now the Obama effect was people buying more guns than had ever been bought at one time. Because just the very idea of a black man being in the White House was perceived as a threat. Just like the Republicans said, they didn't say we've got another plan to save the country. They said we have to make this black man fail. Our energy is going to be directed and focused on making him fail because he is a black man. Now let's go back about the relationship. Black females are not a threat to white genetic survival. Now we have all the genetic material in our ovaries, but women can entice, but they cannot impose sexual intercourse. In other words, imagine you reaching and pulling out your M16 rifle and saying to the man, you are going to have sexual intercourse. Now, gentlemen, what will happen? <laughs> See, that's just physiology 101. The erection cannot be maintained in the presence of fear. Now, the Creator made it that way so you won't have a conflict. If you get afraid, you've got to exit. So the focus is on. The focus is on the black male. In other words, racism and white supremacy attacks us as a total people for the purpose of white genetic survival. But the intense focus is on males because they can impose sexual intercourse. Now, all the different colors that we come in, most black families don't have two people that are the same color. Everybody's a different shade, and then that causes warfare in the family. Who's lightest? Who looks the most white? <laughs> Speaking from my own family situation, everybody, everybody has color, shade, conflict. And it's not only in this area of the world, it's all over South America, all over Central America, all over India. See, who's dark and who's not dark? Who looks most white? And fight amongst yourself. It's called divide and conquer. But all of those colors are because of the activity of white male oppressors and white slave masters. You see, it wasn't Sally Hemings in love with Thomas Jefferson. See, let's get that straight. See, that would be an absolute insult talking about the slave loves the master when the master won't free the slaves or the slave's children. That's a fantasy. No, there was non-stop rape and sexual abuse on the plantations. See, I heard a white female talking about the plantation in her family, and she was saying that um, the slave masters would have relationships with the African women to make more slaves. Well, I guess that's part of it, aside from maybe whatever they might have enjoyed. But let's look at how this plays out. 
You see, because the system of racism is sane, and this is where I went in in the ISIS papers into a discussion of the phrase it used to be said over and over again in the system of racism, white supremacy, amongst black people. I remember coming out of a clinic in Washington, D.C., and I'm coming down the stairs and some young people were passing, and the young people were... <laughs> I said to myself, my first thought was, why are the children talking like this? Mm -hmm. My second thought was, any phrase that is used with high frequency must have significance. Yes. Now, because I understood at that point the system of racism, white supremacy, I said, this language is specific to this system. Mm -hmm. Now, what does it mean? And then my brain computer just went through, well, there are five people categories, man, woman, boy, girl, baby. That covers everybody. Who is the man? If I said, here comes a man, you all, my dad was alive, you wouldn't expect to see him. Who is the man? Speak up, class. The white man. <laughs> that means the only man on the scene. Any other male has four choices. Woman, boy, girl, baby. Some time ago, woman and girl was out. Some time ago. Okay, I said woman and girl was out. Black men died, many of them. Don't call me no boy. So the white people said, fine, you got two choices. I mean, you got one choice left. Baby. Are you all with me? Yeah. 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 Come on, because we're getting free. <laughs> one nation, one Africa. Thank you, Black Sit family. Please keep watching. Remember, Please. follow your dreams. Purchase your tracks today.
tracks today.